Uh, hey, Steve, Andy, what's going on? Hey, though, thank you, Scott. I uh, just remembered to share my screen, so that's a good start. Hello, Andy. Hello, Steve. Hello, Scott. Hi, everybody. All right. Happy uh, Tuesday. <laughs> Public service announcement, for those that don't remember or haven't heard, tomorrow is a market holiday. So if that's news to you, uh, that's a fact. <laughs> so welcome to the uh, December 4th uh, Trade of the Week webinar. Um, and he's going to help me out in the questions panel. And uh, like Scott said, you're all muted, uh, but we've got some prepared content for you today. Let's, uh, let's get right into it. The uh, disclaimer, Trade of the Week, just reminds you we are a software as a subscription company. We've got some content we're going to talk about today and some cool technology to show you, but nothing should be construed as investment advice or financial advice for you or your family. If you need that, you know where to go. you got to go talk to the guys who charge the points and uh, have the licenses hanging on their wall. We'll talk more about this a lot today because uh, you'll be hearing more about it from Trade Ideas in the weeks and months ahead, uh, the Brokerage Plus tool. Uh, the only thing I have to add here is um, if there's new people out there that don't really understand market dynamics and haven't really traded much, this is not a substitute for knowledge. This is a, a jet fighter. So you want to learn how to, how to crawl, then walk, and then from walking you can start jogging and running, which is this tool right here. Um, so it's a very powerful tool. We've got some stuff to show you about, uh, a bit more of that today. But um, keep an eye on that if you need more information, forward slash uh, brokerage plus from our main website. And so we always start off reminding people, uh, we've been around for 14 years. It's a very, um, very robust program. It's uh, very, di very deep. And Andy and I have been using it for about 14 years, 13, 14 years. And it's not something that can be learned overnight. So there's a lot of uh, ways in which we try to make ourselves available to you all. Um, especially uh, starting with Barry's room on the right there. That's a screenshot from the live trading room at Trade Ideas, which is free. And free is a great price when you consider this is the kind of thing that people are paying uh, money for out there. There's a few hundred people in Barry's room every day and a handful of really good ones that kind of take the lead. And Barry does a good job uh, moderating and sharing his screen and helping people with uh, technical support as well. Um, that's Monday through Friday, bell to bell. If the market's open, the, the Trade Ideas Live room is open. And like I said, it's free, so it's a great price. In addition to that, we have the afternoon webinars. I helped out Jamie yesterday. Uh, some of you I see some familiar names, and myself today. And typically we'll have Wednesday webinars as well. Uh, Thursday, Andy uh, will um, kick off the content uh, and uh, take us on a journey on Thursday, depending upon what happened in the markets on Thursday and what's going on. And then Fridays, we always have a three-hour open forum. Anybody can come in and ask questions. We help with scans, uh, help with trading, help with technical support, advice. That's every Friday from 11 to 2 Eastern. So a lot going on there. And at the bottom, we see Trade Ideas University, which is a four-part series that restarts every Monday. So Monday through Thursday, we start with the beginning class, uh, 101, and finish up on Thursdays. Uh, these are live classes, so you can come in and join and ask questions, but we also have a, um, a recorded list uh, of the content as well. It's about six hours, the total playlist of four videos. So anybody can show up to this as well. Uh, the point being, all of this together, we've really uh, made a lot of effort to be available and help with this uh, very in-depth program, which takes, uh, again, a little while to learn. And uh, you know, we're, we're happy to be there every day helping out with these, uh, these, these forums. So, as usual, man and machine combined, uh, no man is better than a machine and no machine is better than a human with a machine. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that today. I actually have a screenshot uh, from Dan Merkin today. He's been testing the uh, AI in addition to some of his own discretions. And so what I just said kind of ties in with the screenshot that I'll show later. Uh, Dan was really put on the right scent, let's say today, uh, on the right track with a lot of the help from the AI. So man and machine together is, uh, is a novel concept, and that's the way the world is going with AI. It's not the end-all, be-all, but we have the human beings to s sort it out and curate it and, and make educated and good decisions based off the technology. So that's where we are. Uh, market recap today, a lot to talk about, um, especially on the heels of what happened yesterday and the reverse of today. Um, definitely some really intriguing stuff again uh, to talk about with uh, Holly AI that a Andy's going to go over. And the actual trade of the week, which is the, the format of this uh, webinar, 
uh, was live. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how that came about and uh, how it is and how it's doing. And then since we're going to be talking a lot about uh, Brokerage Plus, you know, about three weeks ago, I did a session where, you know, I haven't day traded in years. I prefer the swing trading time frame, but I said, if somebody put a gun to my head and said, you have to start day trading, I shared a strategy uh, that was uh, pretty simple and pretty easy. Well, today I'm going to do the same thing. If somebody put a gun to my head and said, Steve, you need to start auto trading, that's it. Well, I've got some ideas of where I would start, and I'm going to share some of those ideas with you. So that's what our content is going to uh, devolve into today. And with that said, we'll minimize that and take a look at the market recap, which was really interesting. Going back to yesterday, um, I was talking with the guys uh, in, in Jamie's room, and uh, yesterday I said, you know, that was a pretty good gap up candle that we had there. And, you know, back here, when we were calling possible SDS short, um, the market did not follow through to the downside. We had a little up movement. So I said, well, you know, let's see. We've got some, some roadblocks and some hurdles to cross. Let's see if we can do it. Well, the market did it. And coming into yesterday's close, we had a nice gap up over the weekend on some trade talks. But notice where it stalled. It stalled out right at that orange line. And guys, those orange lines were not drawn yesterday. Those orange lines have been used for a while. These are pivot lines that correspond back here to a gap and support and support. And resistance, 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 resistance. And yesterday, wouldn't you know it, we gapped right up into that line and that line held. But the action on the candles, you know, still rather constructive. We closed net change big on the day. We had a nice bottoming tail which showed late day buying. And I said, well, it would be sure nice, uh, you know, to look at this market back in a neutral stance again, and maybe we're looking at a double bottom. Maybe we need a couple of days of sideways action before we could uh, resume higher. That was certainly plausible, especially after a bona fide correction of 10%. So if the market wanted to give back 10% and have a nice shower and maybe a double bottom support, there was every reason in the world yesterday to think that we could maybe build on that day that we had yesterday and then look to go higher, but it was not to be. Fast forward to today, we had a lot of damage. We had another one of these candles, which we've really only seen recently uh, back here where we start at the open and close pretty much near the lows. We had one of those days here where there's no late day buying. Nobody came in to stick save and, and help save the market. So we'll see where we go from here. Chances are um, we may have a, a slight uh, narrow range day tomorrow to try and just digest what, uh, what happened today. But what happened was um, we blew back down through all of those barriers that I said we needed to work through on the way up and then consolidate. So I don't know if consolidation is still on the table in hopes of a move higher because what happened today really erased all that. Um, volume, relative volume of 1.6 over here in the corner, 1.86. Now keep in mind that relative volume is sampling this stuff here. It's not sampling the old volume that was really meek. It's been sampling the volatility as of late. So it goes back 15 days. And even that, as you can see, we had a pretty good sized candle, you know, showing up with 1.86. There was some vigor and some, uh, some in intent behind that selling today. Um, we'll see what tomorrow brings. But interestingly enough, um, look at the intraday. Let me uh, switch to my intraday here. I thought it was kind of uh, interesting. Couple things. One, the momentum line that I talk about ad nauseum, the 10 period SMA, you know, repulsed the price, threw it lower. The pr price bounced to the today. Look where it bounced right there at that orange line. Well, that corresponds with the old orange line again that I'd had in here for a while, going back with reason and purpose. It was support here, it was congestion support. Close, close, support on lows that day, more congestion. And so it made an effort and give it a good college try to bounce on that line. But look at what happened, that momentum line, the 10 period moving average. In my book, the momentum will stay in momentum until we have a closing candle above that moving average. Well, if we look at the S&P here, there was about a seven cent portion where the candle did briefly close above. But then we had a really bad wick. It looked like there could have been a turnaround here, but the price got thrown back down and really never saw a closing candle above that moving average again. Same thing if we look at the Qs, it's even more distinct. There actually is not, I looked at the numbers, there was not a close above the declining 10 period moving average on my 15 minute candles here. So the momentum was still intact going into the close. There was an attempt. And again, that attempt on the S&P uh, was where you might expect it. That orange line has been on my screen here for a while at those levels. 
So a um, couple other things. Uh, looking around, the financials are absolutely horrible. The Goldman Sachs chart is about as ugly as it gets and couldn't happen to a nicer bunch of people in Wall Street. Um, so there's no love loss there. XLF, not looking that great. Pretty bad day today. But we start to go over what I've been watching on the Europe markets. If you guys have seen, it depends on what media you're watching, but um, France is pretty much uh, erupting right now. They're a little mad about the um, uh, $7 gas and 70% uh, income tax. That the middle class is having a rough time over there in Europe. Nonetheless, the price action tells the story. Deutsche Bank, the world's biggest derivative bank, um, very ugly close again today. Credit Suisse. Uh, very ugly close again today. So there's some ugly stuff going on over in Europe still that we need to keep an eye on. But I think the real takeaway here for the market recap was yesterday with Jamie. And you know, I was looking at this candle um, thinking, if I can nail that. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. Look, look, looking with Jamie talking about this candle yesterday. Hey, it'd be nice if we could build on this and push through that uh, that that that, uh, that orange pivot line, resistance line. But nope. Today, uh, had none of it. Big volume back to the downside. So all bets are back off again. Um, you know, is this going to become the market uh, that uh, is the bouncing ball, just kind of waiting for the crack in the ice, you know, to, to fall? Looks like that over in the IWM, which also had a really ugly day as well. That IWM is starting to look like that bouncing ball to me. Um, we'll see. So I wanted to give the market a little bit of a, a little bit of benefit of the doubt yesterday but uh, just uh, can't find a reason to do so a day later today. you have any thoughts over there, Andy? Well, that's, that's a really ugly candle there on IWM, all of them, but uh, IWM, IWM was, was the first this morning. Close. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was the first this morning to just say, uh-uh, take off. You know, here's the S&P, put up a bit of a fight sideways. NASDAQ even tried harder to hold the, uh, the line this morning, but that moving average just was the guiding hand today for sure, and the volume, big volume. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's definitely uh, ugly. Uh, we're you know I was surprised there was more, more volume today, but uh, uh, still kind of, yeah we're kind of kind of in the middle of a funky funky land right now, man. Just kind of uh, in the range. Uh, yeah. Well, there's the cross. There's the 50 crossing over the 200 mm -hmm. in the Nasdaq. People call that the death cross. Some people laugh at it. Some people take it seriously. I wouldn't laugh at it. You know, if you've got people managing billion dollar portfolios and they try and keep things big and simple. That's about as big and simple as you can get. The 15 period is crossing over the 200 period. Not good. They give it a, a pet name for a reason, the death cross. S&Ps are about a day away from it over here. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, that's all I've got there for the market recap. Yep, it was uh, very accurate, Steve. Uh, definitely nothing to get excited about today if you're a bull, that's for sure. Uh, no. Nope, and Holly was giving us clues, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. Did you want to talk about what you had to say about Holly before you handed it off? To I me? think I'll you save that for okay. the uh, for after when we go into okay. the bus thing. No problem. All right, now I'm gonna kind of. Uh, uh, I noticed a gentleman in here that uh, came in uh, one of our chat rooms and was talking to me uh, before the uh, or right after the close today and was. You know, you ask a question that we get a lot, you know, how do you trade Holly? You know, what, you know, how do, how do you trade it? And uh, I'm going to tell him the same thing I tell everybody in here. You know, Holly to me is like a very special alert. I have many uh, alerts that I like to have, but I'd like, but this is a very special one. You know, and why is it special? Because it has statistically weighted uh, back testing and optimization done for you the night before. So, you kind of uh, come in uh, with the with the hand kind of stacked in your favor, and what I mean by that is every morning when you come in, you can see what the odds were the night before based upon winning percentage and profit factor. So, and and basically these is pretty much uh, you know winning percentage is exactly what it means. Okay, bullish pullback last night when optimized had a 72% winning percentage. Uh, tonight, maybe this strategy won't even make the cut, and maybe we have a bunch of shorts in here tomorrow. Who knows? But uh, back to the point, it's 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 very special in in a sense that not only has it almost had, uh, gosh, Steve, is it uh, is it going on three years now? Is it 
I for guess what? we're about to, about to complete two years, right? For what? Holly? Holly, Holly stats. Uh, we're about to complete the year. We're about to complete three full years. Yeah. Three full years. Okay. I couldn't yeah. remember. <laughs> January, anyway. 2016, mm -hmm. 2017, 2018 is almost finished. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. And guys, we, we do have, uh, you know, the data. Uh, so, uh, you know, how well she's performed against the benchmark S and P. So with those kind of, uh, statistical, uh, backing, uh, information, you, it, it gives you an idea, uh, you know, that, Hey, uh, the odds are pretty, pretty good that, a trade is going to work if you take it in Holly. Does that mean I take everyone? Shoot, no. And um, uh, I, it's it, it. I treat it like a very special idea. Okay, remember we're idea generation here, and this is a very special one. And you can see today, uh, Steve's going to elaborate this on on more tomorrow on uh, the signals you would have got to. Hey, maybe I don't want to go long in this market, but. Uh, all you got to do is look at Holly Neo. That was our best performing uh, uh, channel or segment today. And look at all the shorts. You had basically about 80% shorts today. A couple of longs, that didn't work. Uh, this, short, uh, this short also didn't work. Let's click on that and maybe we can get a good idea why. Well, it's kind of in a sloppy range. So, uh, and, and I'm looking at this. Whatever happened here on this volume bar, whatever happened, uh, just uh, Holly did not work. But you can see the vast majority of them worked, and they worked very well, especially in risk on. And I'm going to show you an idea, guys, where you have an advantage over Holly. Okay. First of all, let's take, take a look at the market. All right. This is what we were looking at all day long. And look at this 15-minute candles, guys, how long it was before you had a, a candlestick reversal. So you're basically, you know, looking at, come on, give me a stat up there. Uh, Change symbol and come back to it. Yeah, 1245 my time. So basically the market was open four hours and 15 minutes before you even had a, a reversal candle on a 15 minute candle. That's a long time to go. That's a very bearish tape. So one advantage you may have, Holly has all these strats that made the, um, uh, uh, the lineup for the day. Some of them were long and some of them were short. Some of those long strats are still going to fire off. Maybe not as many as you would get in an uptake, but still you're going to have some fire off. So this is where you have the advantage where you might say, and I'm not going to pull up all the other ones, but you can go look. There's some longs in there that if it were me and any trader in their, maybe in their right mind, we'll look at this, uh, you know, uh, candlestick pattern that we had this bearish uh, price action you may say hey I, I don't think i want to go long you know maybe i'll pass this one up it's advantage you have over our uh machine who's going to keep spitting out ideas lucky for us most of them are all you know i i don't i have to go back and look at the others but i probably say they're similar to this probably 80 percent 70 80 percent short uh, another advantage, a big, this is a big advantage. Okay. I want you to look at these top five gainers or even we're going to go six top six gainers here in Holly Neo today. Risk off. Okay. Risk off didn't perform anything like risk on today. And you may say, well, that's, that's not good. You know, no, I would like it to perform better, but look at the six reasons for the best trades today on risk on and the reason she got out. Four of them were timed exit. Okay, she is back tested over and over again and the optimum optimal time is selected for how long to hold the trade. But you as a trader looking at the price action today, when Holly gets out for a timed exit, let's take this Merck for example, uh, you know, Holly gets out right here and really it hasn't done a whole lot, but you may say, hey, you know, I'm going to stick with this, uh, the stop, and we're way away from the stop. I'm still nowhere near where my entry is, bounced up, got close to it, but I was never underwater in this in this trade. I'm going to stick with this because the tape is telling me, the price action is telling me this may pay a lot more. And there you have it. It just, it did. PBTL, another example of a timed exit. Holly gets out right here for a timed exit. Looks like it was probably an hour, maybe yeah, an hour hold. You don't have a bar reversal. The trend is down. The market's going down. You're going to stay in this because there's a lot more meat on that bone for you to get. 
profit save. That's another reason why Holly will get out. And, and I can go on and on. Uh, I don't want to just go through each individual trade today and show tell you how you should have traded it. But I did want to show you because a lot of people make the mistake of getting out when Holly gets out. And it's an easy thing to do. It really is. This is why, guys, we always say, hey, cover half and try to let the other half run. Okay. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show to you today, and this is this is uh, of how you may trade these selling strengths because these selling strengths are contrarian plays, and you are really going against the grain. And you're probably only going to see this when the market is down, you know, and trading down. You're not going to see this on a up, you know, a, a raging market moving higher. And what the strategy is doing is saying, well, this is acting contrarian to the market right now, but I think it's going to change course because uh, it's going to come under pressure from the market. Okay, basically in a nutshell, we're looking to fade a strong stock because the, of market weakness. It's a dangerous strategy, but hey, selling strength had a 62% winning percentage, a profit factor of 3.0. We're not going to argue with the stats. Can I interject something? When we talk sure. about the uh, fade the rips, you know, we're not in a buy the dip market right now. We're in kind of a fade the rip. These are the mm -hmm. ones that are really helpful in conditioning our brain to turn around and jump in front of the of the train because now the backdrop of the market is much different. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and we don't see it with our eyes, but the numbers are there. And it's I was very impressed how tight those blue lines were on the entries on those uh, mm -hmm. fading fading up shorts today and uh, very impressive and it's going to work much better in a market that we have like this than a bull market for sure exactly exactly and uh, here's here's a good example of one now this is not what uh, the topic I had in mind but this was actually a great entry and uh, basically a no pain entry you get hit and the market reverses or say the, the stock reverses and goes back down uh, that one is kind of pain free, but I want to let you know that a lot of times you can get, you know, better entries in these things. So when you see, uh, when you see them, you know, firing off right here and you're saying, wow, this is a very strong <laughs> chart. It's on all time highs. I don't know if I want to get in front of that right now. Maybe I'm going to wait till weakness, you know, and, you know, Usually ones like this will kind of, you know, peter out with the market because the market they're they're holding up and and then eventually what happens the market doesn't bounce and the market just continues to sell off and then you'll eventually, you know, the 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 buyers will give up. They'll back away saying, "Well, this is this is too nasty. The, you know, the market's down 4%, whatever, you know, and then you'll have these, you know, they'll they'll follow the market. Here's another good example, OGE of one, it went off OK. Uh, and another thing, Steve's always talks about the 10 period moving average. This may be a good strategy when to play this. OK, the stock, the stock is strong. You can see this upward sloping 10 period moving average here. OK, you get the alert. You're like, OK, wait, this is a very strong intraday chart. Maybe I want to wake to weakness. All right. Maybe you have to get it a little bit lower. I don't know. But it, look, look what happened once it broke that 10 period moving average. It got real waffly around this 10 period moving average and finally just you know, bled down. Uh, there was one X one I wanted to show to you today that I actually, yeah, this is the one where, yeah, I, uh, I was in uh, my uh, brokerage plus today and this is, I'm just paper trading. So I'm still testing this product. There's a lot to learn. And Steve is right. It's a jet. All right, guys, you're going to, you're going to have to, don't think you're just going to come in here and, and learn this overnight. But CMS, that's the way I traded it today. Okay, I waited. I waited for weakness uh, in the uh, <clears throat> uh, in the in the in the stock chart, and you know the market kept rolling over, kept rolling over, and I think I shorted it right here, thinking, okay, it's going to break this 53, and if it breaks that 53, I should get some nice continuation. So my point I want to make here, guys, is when you see these selling strengths, remember they're major against the grain kind of trades. So you, if you don't feel comfortable jumping in front of that momentum, sometimes it's going to work, sometimes it's not, but maybe, maybe you hold on and you wait for the weakness because a lot of times you'll even get a better price. If you held on, you waited on this one until it finally, you know, kind of got weak, broke this 10 period moving average and then, you know, uh, and then fell with the market. So sometimes, 
you know, you can you can get a better price. Everybody likes to argue that they can't get the prices, you know, Holly gets. Well, I just showed you, you know, three or four examples where you can get a much better one. And uh, uh, Steve, it looks like you're having to answer a lot of questions over there. That's but right. a very a very good day for Holly on Risk On, and because reason it was because she is not afraid to go short. She is e emotionless, yeah. and she is going to play the side of statistical probability and we've been kind of touting the day that the conditioned buyers that have only seen a bull market for year after year we really feel there's going to be a point in time and today was one of those days it's not going to be a single day but today was one of those days to really help shore up people's thinking and flipping it upside down and having something to lean on like a tool like this because it's not easy to flip a strategy that's made money for you you know, overnight. And so we've always felt that the value of Holly is going to be to come in and say, whoa, there, Tiger, let's put the brakes on wanting to go long today. Are you taking a look at what's happening here in the AI window? I mean, it was 35, 30 minutes after the open today, and I'm talking to Andy saying, look at this, there's nothing but shorts. Mm -hmm. Nothing but shorts. You have to be foolish to try and think that you can find that one diamond in the rough. Maybe you can, more power to you, but why go against the odds and, and mm -hmm. look at something like that? Before I take it back, Sri was asking about yeah. that one Toll Brothers trade. That was a goofy um, entry on that one. Right. I guess it is a goofy kind of entry, but look here. It is an earnings play. Uh, okay. And, yeah, I've seen these two. It's based on yesterday's hammer action, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm just thinking, right, that uh, uh, it doesn't have to go through the hammer high. In other words, I guess it has based upon maybe I don't know what – what what uh, that's uh, Michael Noss's uh, – uh, formula, or yeah, it's a, it's a cloud link, so I'm not sure what he has as far as entry goes. But uh, and you're asking me, you may be asking me or one of us, uh, which went long today, and what's the question is, and what's Holly suggested entry next? It's well, she, you can see right here, there was her entry. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can see the stop down here. That was her stop. Uh, and then she got out for profit save. What happened here is she had a nice little profit. And then when it started to uh, uh, go with dissipate, uh, she got out uh, thinking, you know, maybe it had something to do with market weakness as well. But, uh, you know, uh, it's, we're, we're equipped. Equipped every every stock in here once it gets a certain amount of profits. OK, we're not going to let those profits go negative like any good trader should or shouldn't. Uh, so she's equipped with a formula called profit save, where if she gets up a certain percentage and then gives us a certain percentage of that back, she will exit the trade. Yep. Hope that makes sense. Shri. All right. All right, Steve. I think that's, that's about it. I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, yep. uh, all the other twos, they, they didn't perform as well as Neo, but still not a bad day. Not at all. All right, send her back Especially over. Look at the tape and mm -hmm. how many people got rolled over today because I promise you they kept trying to pick bottoms. Hmm. I'll send her over, Steve. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, welcome back. So next on the agenda was to talk about the trade of the week. Um, once again, we tried to pick a trade of the week that um, – was not a high flyer where if the market did decide to want to break on us, we don't know what's going to happen, but if there is a break, we're looking for something a little bit safe. Well, we went again with the uh, saucer bottom um, trend reversal. And uh, it, if we go back to, let's see, now oh, there it is. That's what we had to look at on Friday. And uh, with the giant gap open on Monday, we had uh, a trigger, but Lots of places where people could could have defined an entry. I mean, if you want to get into the trade and you see it's gapping up pre-market, some people might tr choose to grab it pre-market. Some people might choose to maybe see if it'll come back and fill the gap. It did midday, but just so happens that was our entry point too. So there are many opportunities for the patient or the impatient to try and grab an entry. Um, but what I wanted to point out was when we have what happened today, um, you know, this is certainly a, a, a big pullback, as a lot of charts probably look the same. I wanted to go back to the actual copy of the email and remind people then there, as always, keep one eye on the major market action. And that's going to be your number one priority in managing risk is what the hell is the major market doing? Well, for having a day where the Dow is down 800 points, 
probably going to take a lot of things with it. So here we are. It uh, definitely got taken with it. It seems to be mirroring the market, but for the most part, the idea was to select something that wouldn't get too bashed if the market had a really bad day. And it's still kind of within the confines here of its build, base building. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the trade is still open. The uh, idea was uh, if it got down below, if somebody's still in this and wasn't scared off by today's market action, uh, you know, the stop should be down here in this area below that shoulder for the most part. Um, we're not giving out individual stop numbers anymore because everybody was using that stop number and it was creating a wonderful set of bowling pins for uh, a lot of stop orders uh, from the market making algos that can see that stuff out there. And so not giving out um, specifics, it's probably a good dovetail to what we're going to go into next. Before I get into uh, the Brokerage Plus, this is a screenshot from Dan today. And I said Dan is testing the AI using Brokerage Plus. So in other words, Brokerage Plus is getting its input directly from the AI. So you'll see a lot of names on here today uh, that were put on here from the AI. A lot of negative numbers on the share size column. That signifies it's a short sell. So there's a few discretionary trades in here, some of the bigger ones like Cisco and Oracle. You know, Dan decided to get short, but that brings up a great point. And Dan dropped this into the uh, you know meeting today. He said, you know, I came in with you know kind of a short bias, but when I looked down and I saw the AI and I saw Holly doing nothing but going short, it gave him confidence to short some other discretionary items. It gave him confidence to maybe even add to some short-sighted positions that were working in his favor. So there is the perfect analogy of you know what I was saying earlier, which is the focus of this presentation every week. Dan was using the man and the machine perfectly today. It was giving him tremendous insight as to where the path of least resistance was. And um, uh, I'll, come, I'll come back to your question in a second, Greg. Dan was uh, just getting tremendous value out of the AI, just showing the clearing to go short. And um, so a lot of trades on here were AI trades. Uh, and by the way, not risking more than $34 per trade on the AI trade. So it's coming. It's, it's a jet plane for sure. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's exceeding our expectations. Also, real quick, somebody asked earlier, how did you get those values on your AI? Like, for instance, why is my risk on showing 1900? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, if you go to options under tools, you can control that right here. This is a, a good suggestion. And it, again, dovetails right into brokerage. Plus, I said Dan was risking no more than $34 per trade on that last screenshot. So the system was calculating the, the distance between the stop and the current price and then calculating the share size to not exceed those values. So this is available to everybody. You can configure the AI however you want. Some people might risk 50 a, sh a trade. Some people might risk 250 a trade, but it's a nice way to get a custom a feel for how that might affect you. All right, so ECPG, back to that. Um, they asked the rounded bottom is still intact. If we get positive trading with a cheerier market, oh yeah, yeah, I mean, Greg is doing kind of uh, the same thing. You know, the bigger picture is still intact. He's saying, well, you know, this was a, a, a trade that could have gone, but it didn't. So I'm getting the second mouse has the opportunity, the second mouse to get the cheese here and maybe get a nice low risk entry near the lows of these. And if it doesn't pan out, well, again, that was a good risk reward. Quick loss, not a big one. Um, so, yeah, that's that's good thinking. And um, you can always um, look to play off of other people's pain if there's something that's still intact, but it's on the other end of the uh, uh vacillating range we could say rather than buying the the breakout of that vacillating range greg's saying well you know maybe i'll look at the, buying the low end of this vacillating range here and maybe this thing will pan out and just one before we move on from the trade of the week the idea is not to create a scalp that once it triggers everybody jumps in and tries to make 50 cents on it that day no these are longer term ideas and so greg has the right picture let this thing gyrate and digest back and forth and maybe the softer bottom will in fact pan out and he has the right point if capital if the market decides to behave itself again when it opens back up on Thursday. All right, so um, last segment here is going to go into Brokerage Plus a little bit, and I want to talk a little bit about the expectations of what the public should expect from us. We're providing the tool. We're providing the picks and the shovels. What we don't have is the treasure map. We don't have the gold vein map. That's up to you guys to find. And so 
what I want to show you today is, is and tell you before we go into it, you know, we've had a lot of discussions when this brokerage plus, you know, does go and people are looking for custom formulas. Again, they should have a custom idea of what they're looking for for a custom formula uh, before they attach it to Brokerage Plus. Where I'm going with this is we're not going to be uh, give a man a fish and feed him for the day kind of stuff. We want to teach you guys how to fish with this tool and make it work for you. So with that said, I'm not going to share what I'm creating, but you guys can easily reverse engineer it, wink, wink, if you know what I mean. But you know, we're not going to be handing out customs and formulas and saying, hey, this is a great one to plug into Brokerage Plus. There's a lot of liability there and I want to sleep at night and I want people to be using this tool correctly, which means you really got to know what's under the hood and what's happening. So that said, I'm going to say, like I said at the beginning, if I had to go back and somebody said, you need to make money using Brokerage Plus, what would my approach be? My approach would be something along the lines of um, using this bouncers scan. Let me go back a little earlier in the day to try and see what we're looking for. All right, let's see if we can find something. Here's a good one right here. Perfect example. So there's yesterday's green candle. Today's red candle sneaked just below yesterday's low for the most part, very close to it. And yeah, there's yesterday's low right there. I'm going to draw that line. There's the first line is yesterday's low. We sneaked below yesterday's low here. And then look at this, the arrow signaling this is the candle that moved back up into yesterday's range. So this is the kind of thing that I and the brain is really kind of hard pressed to find good setups all day long on these, but this is the perfect kind of setup for a bot to come in and say, oh, okay, well, this strategy is looking for continuation, is looking for failed continuation to the downside. So the short sellers did not get momentum and the price action is just reverting to the mean. It's just taking a breath and popping back up into yesterday's range. So once it pops into yesterday's range, we want to catch that and hold it for like 45 minutes and then all bets are off after 45 minutes. So this to me is what I'm actually testing uh, the, uh, the brokerage plus with. Um, but if I had to use real money and I was forced to go against what I like to do, cause I'm an old dinosaur, you know, this, this auto trading stuff's interesting. Maybe down the road, it might be something I might want to play with, but for now it's outside of my wheelhouse. But if I was told I had to go in and do it based on the knowledge that I do have and the experience that I did have day trading, I think this would be a viable, um, strategy. So that's the idea of the strategy. Find something that's breaking down yesterday's lows and popping back up. The problem is, if we're going to configure this, let me just show you what I have here. I have something very basic, all right? And then I'll back up a moment. There is a copy of Bouncers in Channel 4. The problem is, it's an older version that has been modified a couple months ago that's not really optimized. We're going to go through that right now. But there's a lot of configurations on the one in channel four. So I'll give you a quick look at this one. This is really all I'm going to start with here. And so if you go to channel four, I mean, you could probably do the same thing. Start with some basics, half a million shares average. Time of day, this is interesting. We're not going to start scanning for these until 30 minutes after the open, meaning I want stuff to uh, digest and, and create the setups. I don't want a couple trades down and back up. I want to see some, um, I want to see some, uh, some, some real, uh, possibilities there. And so the longer it can stay below that yesterday's low, the better. So 30 day filter. And then here's the real nuts. We, we got to have this. This is the position and range. The, the event of the crossing above resistance is not going to fire unless it's within this band of yesterday's range. So a tick off yesterday's low, but no more than 10% off yesterday's low. So this is what I'm going to start with. And where I'm getting at is we're going to have to find a cloud code of the strategy that we can plug into brokerage plus. Now, when I go and I back test the strategy, um, let's do a realistic seven o'clock because that's where we're going to start a half an hour after the open. Let's simulate that. Uh, well, timed exit. There's my 45 minute time window, risk management, risking 1% to make 3%. And that's about it. We're going to sample only about 30 days, I think. Let's just sample 30 days and see what we get. I think we're going to get a lot. Simulate buy. And what I'm looking for is at least a strategy that's going from lower left to upper right. And if there's a lot of trades in there, which there are, here's my lower left to upper right. Okay, so this is a good base strategy, but 2,300 trades in 30 days, I'm not gonna turn a robot on to that. I think we need to do a little optimization here. 52% um, winner, 1.72 profit factor. So we'll spend a little moment here and do some basic optimization to start with the price. I think we all agree that 
stocks above 174 are not working that well, so we'll cap that strategy off at that price. Time of day, let's do a 15 minute intervals and see what we find. Well, looks like uh, this is our sweet spot here from 7.15 my time to about 8.44 my time. So let's run that again with those numbers. 7.45, I'm sorry, 7.15 to 8.45. All right, click, back test, 7.15. I'm on the West Coast, by the way, 8.45. Okay, simulate buy. We're going to knock out a lot of those trades that we had to start with and hopefully improve our strategy metrics. Ooh, we sure did. Down to only 950 trades, but look at how much improvement we did. From 2,300 to 950, we've gone up to a 57% win percentage and a profit factor of 2.3. That's a really good starting point for that too. But I think there's more work that can be done. I'd like to get this down, at least cut that in half to where I can divide that by 30 and maybe count on how many trades I might uh, possibly expect. So let's do the deeper dive of optimization, optimization with other filters. First thing I want to do is how far away from RS, um, from VWAP. I think this meaning back to the method of this trade again, we're just trying to catch the jump rope, the breath in and the breath out of statistical mean reversions. So where are we in relation to VWAP? That's the first thing I'm curious about. I think it's going to be, there it is, distance from VWAP. So let's compare to these uh, values. Let's do maybe 0.5. All right. So the majority of our trades are occurring down here, and it looks like the majority of the trades are occurring in the good window, but I'm going to shore that up even more. So I'll make this our minimum of VWAP distance, and I'll make this our maximum. That's a pretty dark green number. Pretty dark green number. I like that. All right, so what else can we do? Maybe let's compare this to the S&P, the change on the day. Um, S&P change today. What does this tell us? Okay, interesting. Let's do maybe 0.25 values. Wow. Look at this. When the S&P is down, we're getting a really solid. You see that, Andy? I don't think I've seen numbers that solid before. Look at that. So when the S&P is down... Yeah, when the S&P is down big, this thing is working great. So we're going to we're going to lop off a lot of this stuff up here. And this might just become a strategy for days where the S&P is down. Um, interesting. So I'm going to make uh, that my maximum. And then we're going to run this and see what we get. So I've only made two changes. How far away from the VWAP is the price and what's the general market doing? Let's go back and run this again. Everything else being the same. Wow, there's some dark green in there. And we're down to an area, I think, where we can work with here. Mm -hmm. So what do we got? We, <laughs> shit, it's pretty darn good. We sampled 30 days. And so if we've got 223 uh, divided by 30, who's really on the math right now? Uh, 223 divided by 30, it's about seven and a half trades a day. Not bad. I'm going to stick with this. This is some really solid dark green, almost a 5.0 profit factor, 66 win percentage. Um, look at this, the discrepancy, and this is where you start to leave the pack. The average winner, Andy always talks about this. What's the difference? 43 cents positive, 18 cents negative. That's where you start to get these dark green numbers. This is pretty impressive. So that was step one. Um, again, I'm not going to share this with you guys, but this – Record. This webinar has been recorded, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, let's go in now. Now that we have our settings squared away, I'm going to save this to my cloud and optimize uh, December 4th so I know that it's testing pretty well. All right. Step two. All right. What we're trying to do here is figure out something we can plug into the Brokerage Plus. So... I'm going to go to Brokerage Plus. I'm not connected at the moment. But if I were, it doesn't even matter if I'm connected. I can come in and right-click and load from cloud. What I forgot to do is share, save, and share. So let's go back to save and share. The share function gives me the button to copy, which is what I need. Now it's in my clipboard. Now I can come to Brokerage Plus, load from cloud, and it's already in there. When I load it, you're going to see the name of it. 
Okay, this is important. Uh, I'll add to existing. These are just some of the things we go for. And look at that. There it is. There's the name. Bouncers Raw Optimized. So from there, we can actually go in and we'll save this for another day because this is another rabbit hole. But double check, making sure, okay, this, there's my strategy. There's my filters. I'm going long. That's a good start. Perfect. Initiate trade. See, this, this, uh, this, this user interface, guys, is very similar to what we were just running in the back tester. Not a whole lot. Now, this is interesting. 10 is what I have set. So if this thing starts spitting them out like crazy, this value right here is what you want to pay attention to. If you want to have no more than five trades from this strategy trigger, hey, they might all trigger in the first 10, you know, 20 minutes of the active window. But after five, that's it. The system's going to lock you down so you don't you know, leave the computer and come back and you got 37 open trades from one strategy. I like to keep that on 10. Uh, the position sizing, this is kind of what we were talking about earlier um, with Holly. Uh, we can go to base it on stop loss. And this is what Dan was doing. Dan was running that at $34 risk value, really, <laughs> really keeping it tight for the old um, Samsonite gorilla test to kick this thing around and see if there's bugs in it. That's so much of a Dan's number, just random <laughs> 34. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not 50. So, not, <laughs> no. Yeah, not, it's got to be an odd number. Not even an even number. It's got to be odd. Oh, actually, 34 is <laughs> even. Yes. Um, three and four and seven isn't. So a lot of the stuff, again, we'll save for another day. But again, guys, the point was to come from uh, a perspective that we're going to be saying going forward, we're not going to be handing out treasure maps. You know, we don't have them. We have the tools to help you guys find the treasure map. What I just went through here was one of the ways in which you can build one of your maps. And uh, I just happen to think that's a pretty decent strategy for automated trading. It's actually working pretty well in theory. Um, I think Andy's doing the same thing. But uh, you can get a basic version of uh, this this scan on channel four guys and um, you know just kind of start from scratch uh, go back and refer to the video that uh, is being recorded if you really want to try and reverse engineer it you're welcome to I'm just not going to hand it out it's just going to have to be the way it is what is the plan to support options uh, I don't know if we don't have a plan for options um, you have to talk to uh, okay so these are going to be connected to um, interactive brokers equities feed uh, they're not going to turn around and, and start firing off option orders maybe that's something that can come down the road um, but it's all geared on the equities uh, side how would you provide yeah profit factor Andy gave you a good definition of that you know the total profits divided by the losers so in the case that we were looking at a profit factor of almost 5.0 means the profits are outstripping the losers uh, by a factor of five. Mm -hmm. Another way to put it. All right, so any questions on that? Again, Brokerage Plus, it's a jet. <laughs> we're strapping you, we're not strapping you, and you're strapping yourself into a jet, and uh, you know, we're showing you the dials here. It's, uh, it's going to be a very powerful tool and a very cool, uh, cool thing going forward. And I know a lot of you out there are eager to to get going on it, so that's why we wanted to spend some some time on that today. Steve, why, before we before we get off, uh, you know that was an incredible alert that you showed us. Now that we're kind of in a bearish tape, have you found that? Have you tried flipping that to see if it works the other way that's around? A good question. So here's what we would do: we would take our. Um, I'm going to just first off duplicate it. Now I might strip out some of the. Uh, filters, but maybe before I do that, I can just run it as is. But first, I have to configure it and flip it. And here's the flip button. Notice the event will change to a crossing down below support. And all the other filters also invert accordingly. Now we have something that's going to look for topping tails. Like here's a great example right here. I just look up and I see one. Boop, traded above yesterday and then dropped back into the zone. That's the kind of thing this would be looking for. So if we right click and back test strategy, everything else being the same, the time of day and all that. Simulate sell. I don't know what we're going to get. Not bad. No. <laughs> Actually not bad at, not all. at all. Did it did it flip the, the spy has to be up, though? Uh, Probably. I bet you it did. Let's see. Yep. Okay. And to be up. Interesting. Yeah. What's no. Yeah. Uh, the code, you know, again, um, for the uh, for the bouncers, you can get that on channel four. You can save it to your cloud. But before I started optimizing, all I really had in here, make sure you've got the uh, 
position in previous days range, one to 10%. I had the time of day at 30. You don't even need that when you do your optimization. You'll see that simple five day moving out, five day average. We did cap out the, uh, the price at that level. Um, but the distance from VWAP is something I added and the net change is something I added. But I encourage you guys to go and grab that scan, save it to your cloud, and then start playing around with it and doing some of the steps that we did there, especially those of you who are thinking about um, auto trading. These are the kind of things you're going to want to get familiar with. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, you're welcome, Waleed. Uh, let's uh, bring in Scott for uh, almost top of the hour here and maybe a couple of announcements. Call it a day. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we've already heard about Brokerage Plus. To find out details about how to put down that deposit to get it in January, go to trade-ideas.com slash brokerage plus. Uh, for just $100, you can reserve your space to get in the first wave of the release. It, the total is $1,100. You deposit $100, and then when we release it, we charge you the balance and activate Brokerage Plus for your account. Uh, so to learn all the details, again, go to that URL, trade-ideas.com slash brokerage plus. Uh, there's also a podcast that comes out weekly. Just search for Trade Ideas Podcast in your favorite podcatcher and add that. Uh, be sure to check out the archives, too, in addition to the new releases. Uh, there's always some interesting stuff to be found. We have some guest pods on there. Uh, there is an ebook that has been perfect for this year because it's five ways to win in a post BTFD market, and we have certainly been in a rocky market. Uh, both Steve and Andy contributed chapters, so go ahead and get it for free. Trade-ideas.com slash ebook. Put in your email address and get the download link delivered to your inbox, and then save that PDF uh, and consult it, learn it, uh, use it. Uh, there's a discount code available this month, Tis the Holly, all caps. Uh, that lets you save 15% off this month or your uh, your first month or year of trade ideas. You can also use this if you are a standard subscriber and want to do an upgrade. Just plug that in on the upgrade path, and uh, you get to save a little bit, 15%. It's a nice way to start a premium trial, I mean a premium subscription. Also, if you have any questions, email us, info at trade-ideas.com. You can follow Steve at Today Trader. We also have at Trade Ideas. Facebook.com slash Trade Ideas Pro is our Facebook page that you can follow and uh, share what we post with your friends. Uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Andy. Thanks all. We'll have a recording up later on tonight or tomorrow. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. See you. Thanks, guys. We'll see you Thursday. Later on.